people say, hey, you know what, do what you love passionately and you'll be all right. Yeah, I get that, but there is a place and time for all of that. Hey, what's going on guys? Jeff Koga here and uh, welcome to the live stream as I step into the office and this will uh, be turned into a podcast uh, depending on how good the audio quality it should be. Um, but I want to talk about something uh, today uh, called No Sex Until Retirement is for Idiots. Um, I've been talking a lot about... Um, a lot about entrepreneurship, a lot about uh, being smart when you're actually working, right? As I always say, I'm not a huge believer uh, on hustle, hustle, hustle. Working hard doesn't necessarily equate to um, an upside that you get in terms of career, in terms of money, in terms of satisfaction. The interesting thing is this, is that it's kind of an aha discovery moment even on my part, um, which is I like to do the stuff that I enjoy doing. Well, it's not, maybe it's not a surprise or shocking, right? But it really is when you start to reflect back and look at what you're doing, is I truly enjoy to do the stuff that I like to do. Uh, and the stuff that I don't want to do sometimes is one of the most important things that you have to do when it comes to your career, when it comes to business, okay? And there's no way to go around that, all right? Um, where, but there is a place and time for all of that. Okay, and so as I'm reflecting back and looking at some numbers that the quarter is coming to an end, um, there's certain milestones and goals that I have not hit. I didn't execute, okay? That's number one thing. I didn't do the things that I was supposed to do. These things that you know you're capable of doing and if you're not doing it, it you know, it should fire you up. But, but here's, here's, the, here's the thing that uh, really uh, uh, made me go, aha, right? The topic of no sex until retirement is for uh, idiots, right? now. That statement, I didn't make up, all right? It was actually made by Warren Buffett, Mr. Oracle himself, right, okay? Uh, <laughs> Warren Buffett said this uh, in an interview, and this interview was with Warren Buffett himself and Charlie uh, Munger, uh, which is his business partner, right? What's the number one thing that led to your success? And then he said, and he talked about passion. Right, and um, and I and I've always said, hey, when it comes to entrepreneurship, hard work is really a, really a prerequisite, and I still believe that to the core. My counter argument has always been, hey, man, passion is overrated. Going back to the original uh, uh, interview with Charlie Munger and uh, Warren Buffett, he went in and he started talking about like, yeah, when I go to schools and high schools, when I talk about, hey, what should you do uh, for your career? And he said, hey, go after what you're interested in. Go after what you're passionate about. Because they said, hey, work is going to be a large part of uh, your life and you want to make sure that you're not going to go ahead and have regrets when you actually get old as me. And he says he's been genuinely lucky um, as a man to be able to do what he's been doing since he was, uh, what, 12 years old when he bought his first stock? I think that he has probably the best business model ever. The man is the richest man in the world, all right? And not only that, I think he only has, like, in his office, like, 20 people. He spends most of his day reading books. And then he said he went into uh, the example of a baseball as a baseball player approaches a play, and I grew up playing baseball, he says, look, you have to wait for the pitches. If the pitcher is throwing in the strike zone, then you're going to get a strike. So you have to swing. Otherwise, you don't have a chance. If it's outside of that strike zone, then you don't have to. But he said, when it comes to investing, he said, you don't have to swing at all. You just have to swing when it's in your sweet spot. It is so true, right? You get to a certain level where, where um, one, you have your basic necessity covered. And Warren Buffett says that, hey, you know what, investing, you don't have to swing. He says, hey, all these opportunities are going to be thrown at you, but you don't have to swing if it's not in your sweet spot. And all you have to do is just be ready and be educated to swing. And when you do swing, because it's in your sweet spot, you're going to make contact and you're going to hit it out of the park. He just says, I just need one great idea a year, and that's it. And I just wait and wait and wait. That's so true. And even in the space of, for me as like a real estate investor, you know, before I was on the hamster wheel where I needed to buy properties, right? To sustain a huge overhead, um, to flip properties, right? And because we had team members, we needed to pay. Um, and I believe and I convinced myself that's the only way. But in reality now, you know, hey, I'm just selective, just waiting 
waiting, waiting. I'm underwriting currently a uh, 30 plus unit uh, apartment complex right now. I thought it was a great deal. Um, but um, as I'm doing the due diligence, it may not be. If it's not a great deal, no. And going back again, finally, to what that means, hey, no sex before retirement is for, for idiots, okay? Is that one, if you're not going towards at least remotely what you're great at, okay? And because the world around us constantly tells us what the, the crap that we need to actually fix. Have you kind of recognized that, right? Um, hey, man, you're not smart enough. Hey, man. You know, hey, you're not organized enough. Hey, man, you're not taking action fast enough. Hey, man, you know, hey, you're losing, you're losing hair a little bit. You know, hey, man, you know, whatever it is, every all the the your weakness gets pointed out. And then reality, just focus on what you're good at, right, or great at, and just go with that, and um, it becomes so much easier. That's what Warren Buffett meant as he says the scenario. Hey. No sex before retirement is for losers. So if you are currently have a job, right, and you don't enjoy it, find a way to do something that you enjoy, right? If you have a business and it's growing, maybe sometimes the easiest thing is to just quit and then go do the things that, uh, that's making you and so, uh, your strain. Not to say that you're not supposed to work hard. Okay, because I learned this as I'm learning like coding, right? Because I'm actually learning coding. You guys are gonna laugh, right? Um, like last year, like I took like a coding class, right? Like uh, Ruby's on Rails, and I was learning about all this stuff. And there's a concept uh, in there when you learn how to code is that uh, coding in itself is that you want to use the least amount of codes uh, to actually do. Um, do the thing that you want it to do because there's so many different ways to code, right? So, but what you don't want to do is have tons and tons of scripts to do this one thing. So, um, really, the focus should be more on the at, the output that it creates, not the actual input. Right, but sometimes as we're growing businesses, sometimes we go through right, we start focusing more on guess what the code that we have to put in, right? The code that we have to put in, okay? And versus no, get the least amount of code or the least amount of input to get the maximum out of uh, output, all right? So that's what I got for y'all on this episode, this live stream. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a comment below. Let me know, and uh, um, I'll talk to you guys uh, shortly. Take care, and bye-bye.